Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're carrying on with the minimalist quest. So there is good news and there's bad news. Um, the good news is uh, that it's all been going very well and uh, I've had some major success in getting rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. We're talking major amounts of stuff. Um, now you can see this room is empty. Um, well, pretty much empty. I've still got a few bits and bobs lying around, but for the most part, the, the room has been filled and has been emptied again. Now, the original plan was to see whether I can get all of my possessions into one room, but I very quickly worked out it's just not gonna be practical to do that because uh, it would have literally filled up the room and then I would have had no space to work on sorting it all out and everything. So um, I decided to do one room at a time. So I'll bring one room worth of gear in here, sort through it all, and then put back whatever I wanna keep and then deal with whatever's left over. And that's the way I've been doing it. Now, the bad news is I made an entire, quite a long video, probably about 40 minutes long video, a few days ago, when I was in the midst of doing all of this, unfortunately, the entire video is a write-off because it had no sound. I made the rookie mistake of leaving this little thing plugged in to the back of the GoPro, which turned off the onboard microphone. So there I was filming away, chatting away, thinking that I was recording everything and none of the sound came out. Uh, I've just got uh, some bits over there, which i am actually got up on eBay at the moment. I've got a few other bits here that I've got to sort, but I've done things like uh, sorting out my office. Um, now, originally, I this originally was my craft room. I shrunk it down to go into a little box room here, um, and that wall at the back there had loads and loads of these shelving units right across the back and they were absolutely chock-a-block full of craft stuff and paints and stuff and, and, and it's stuff that I haven't touched in years um, and I'm very unlikely to go back to so I decided to shift all those on pass those on to uh, people that I know that will you know do um, do something with them so this is now half the <laughs> half the the room that it was i've got more space like space like i didn't know was possible in this room uh, that's just all um yet to find a home that's just uh, empty boxes um, but the only craft things i've really kept is my mug press uh the mug blanks um and well, that's about it. I think I oh, um, kept the sewing machine because you, you, every house needs a sewing machine and some sewing um, accessories uh, because, uh, you know, you, you don't want to throw those things away. Um, but that's pretty much it. You know, just got a few camera bits and bobs uh, and then the rest is sort of office stuff, which I need. I use every day for them at my businesses um, and a little bit of wrapping, a little bit of wrapping paper for gifts and things and a first aid kit. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, so, and obviously on my printing stuff, so I'm not gonna, not, not gonna get rid of my big printer because printing has always been an ongoing thing that I really enjoy doing. And I quite often swap out these pictures, although I haven't done it for a little while. So the office is done. The loft room, which is, um, cause I don't have a loft. I've got a room full of shelves uh, and the, the loft room has been completely cleared and that's almost bare. That's like another empty room. Um, there's just a few essential bits left in there. I've got the shelving units that are left over from the office, which I'm undecided at the moment what to do with them, but they're probably gonna go, um, they're probably gonna go, because uh, if, if I have no use for them, then, you know, uh, they can go. Uh, let's just have another sip of coffee, it's early. Well early for me, I think it's about 10-ish. <laughs> but today, I'm gonna to be working on my airing cupboard. And uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been putting this off and putting this off, and you can see why. Um, <clears throat> this is my old airing cupboard. It used to have a, uh, a hot water tank, then I had my hot water system uh, updated to something more modern, so I just have these little water heaters near the, um, 
the taps now. So I didn't need a, a, a proper water system. Um, so this is where I keep all my blankets and towels and linen and everything. And there it is for one person, <laughs> there is so much here that just, it, it's just sat here forever. Um, it's never been used. It's handy now and again, you know, if you need a spare duvet because you've got a guest staying over. Um, but there is just way, way too much here. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to take the whole lot out, get it in that room, and then I'm going to sort through it, figure out what's staying and what's going. Uh, so that's going to be on my card for today. So uh, I think I might just finish my coffee before I make a start on that. <laughs> Right, so that is the airing cupboard now cleared. I don't think this thing's been decorated since we moved in in the 70s. Um, now I do have a bunch of books here. Th this, is, this is what I use for water, hot water now. And to be honest, I, I rarely need hot water in the bathroom upstairs. It's generally whenever I'm, um, if I need to wash, I'll, I'll have a shower, which is my shower room downstairs. So this thing has barely been used. It's always hot all the time, but it just, I've got it on a timer switch that comes on just once a day. So it heats it up once a day for 15 minutes and then it stays, I think it's a 10 litre, might be a 15 litre tank in there. And that stays hot all day long in that tank. So if I do need hot water in the bathroom, it's there instantly because the bathroom is literally the other side of that wall. And this, as a water heater, um, it saved me on so much um, as far as electricity costs go. Um, it's amazing. And like I say, the hot water is there. The only thing it won't do is fill the bath because there's a tank in there. Like I say, it's either 10 or 15 litres, um, which is going to put sort of that much water on the bottom of the bath. Um, but I, I haven't had a bath in years. What a smelly urchin. Um, but no, I just have showers all the time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> quite why I'm talking about my water heaters, I don't know, because I meant to talk about the books. Now, as a prepper, I've always been into the prepper mindset. Um, years ago, I actually made videos on it. I don't make videos on it anymore, but I still retain that slight prepper mindset. And if ever we reach a stage where, um, you know, if, if terrible stuff happens and we suddenly don't have access to things like the internet, I've always kept back some basic uh, books that I think are going to be useful um, if we suddenly find ourselves, you know, sort of launched back to the 1920s where we've got no, uh, uh, no access to this, uh, this marvellous thing that is the internet. So there's basically, um, you know, hedgerow medicines, herbal remedies, things like that. Uh, all sorts of, um, I think I've got the SAS survival handbook and all sorts of things in there. And, and I'm quite happy to just leave them there and uh, let them sit there. I think I've even got a Bible in there as well, just in case, you know. But yeah, oh, there's, um, there's a, another book there, which is, uh, I think it's called Where There's No Doctor. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's, remedies and, and things in there as well sort of for emergency preparedness so that's my basically emergency preparedness stash of books so at least i've got some reading material if i can't watch youtube videos anymore i'm going to leave those there because there's no point in taking those out i am going to keep those those are a thing and they're staying and they're very very carefully as well very carefully um apart from that one one book on the top which is a an anime series that came with a, um, a box set of DVDs. Um, the rest of it are very, very hand-picked, um, chore choreographed, that's the wrong word, isn't it? Um, but yeah, these are very, very selectively hand-picked. I had a massive collection of books uh, and I, I whittled them down to just these. Um, so anyway, they're staying. Oh, so the goal now is to see how little we can get back in here and you won't you won't believe the amount of stuff that came out of here i'll show you now um it's it's ridiculous look at this to, uh, like the, look at just the sheer volume of stuff uh, that that came out of that airing cupboard and that that's like this is this is where i find stuff is oppressive 
I mean, you think about it, this house, I don't know what the square footage of this house is, but I only have a certain amount of airspace, of volume in this house. And um, all the time you have stuff, it cuts into that volume, it cuts into that space. Um, so this is, you know, this is airspace that cannot be um, used because it's occupied. Um, and that in, I, I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but in, in your, uh, in your mind, when you're living in a space, but that space is being encroached upon by stuff. So it's suddenly, you know, you, if you've got, I don't know, 500 square feet, but you can only actually use 100 square feet of it because everything else is, is occupied. For me, I find that um, oppressive. I find that, um, like I said, when I, when I just try to describe how stuff has its claws into me, that's kind of what I mean. Um, but anyway, what, what I've been doing for this sorting out thing is I've got, got a table. I've got, got a little fold-up table out of the shed. It saves groveling around on the floor. And what I've been doing is um, putting the stuff on the table, making a decision, right, is this going in the charity pile, the bin pile, or the stay pile? Um, and for a lot of this, luckily we've got a textiles bank just down the road. In a local supermarket, you can actually take your bin bags full of textiles and clothes and things like that and just drop them in there so i should be able to get rid of a lot of this but i'm going to have a little sort through and we'll see what we come up with so that's a brand new towel um, i think i'll put that one aside i'll use that so i've now got three standard towels two small hand towels i don't really need any more than that um, I've got a load of towels there in the box. Uh, that, those are for Damon, for the animal rescue. They, they need towels. So I've got a few old, uh, old towels there that I don't use anymore. Now, this blanket. I've got a few blankets that I've already binned uh, or, or are going to go to charity. Um, I did use this blanket last year. In the middle of the winter, I'll have a blanket downstairs on the sofa, and it's normally this one. But there's also another blanket here. Now this, I'm definitely keeping. Um, this was made by uh, one of my subscribers, actually, and uh, she sent it to us. It's a handmade, and uh, it's a lovely blanket. And I, in the depth of winter, this actually goes on my bed because it's, it's so cozy and warm. Um, so uh, that one's a definite keeper. And... It does actually get a lot of use, which is really nice. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of care and love gone into making that blanket. So that's kind of a special blanket. So I think I'm going to keep those two, and that'll be the only blankets I have. Uh, the rest can go. So I'll put these aside to keep. And then we've still got this lot here. Um, I shrunk wrapped a lot of them up just to save on space. So these are in vacuum bags. Now these are cushions I had in my um, my van. Uh, got wolves on them, and again they're just they've just been sat there. They haven't been used. And I'm to be honest, I'm not actually a fan of cushions. So do I want to put them in my van? Uh, not really. Um, so these can I think these can go in the. Um, the charity, because uh, I can't, I mean, they're the wrong color to start with. I mean, that's kind of a blue, well, blue gray might work in the van because um, it's a kind of a, a charcoal gray covering. But like I say, I'm not actually a fan of cushions. I don't particularly like them. So I think, yeah, I'm going to give those away. Um, these vacuum bags as well. Uh, more bedding. Oh, so much bedding. <laughs> I, at one point, I went through a phase of, of having what's called brushed cotton bedding, um, but I've, I've gone right off it. Uh, I used to have brushed cotton sheets and brushed cotton duvet covers. And I mean, they're kind of cozy in the winter, but what I find is when you wear PJs, <laughs> when you turn over at night, the PJs, one of the material wants to stick to this like Velcro. So you get all twisted up. It's just not good. So these days I use um, like a, a, a high quality cotton, which is very smooth and silky. So turning over in bed, it's, it's a breeze. You kind of just slip round without all your PJs getting all twisted up. 
sort of because of the friction. Um, <laughs> slightly nuanced information there about um, bedding, but these things are important, you know. Um, all right, so there's another uh, bag. This thing, don't use it very often, but every now and again, if I get a backache, these are amazing. You just basically roll the lower part of your back on this on the floor and it sort of, you, know, you hear all the clicking and the crunching and everything, and then all of a sudden your backache's gone. So that's gonna stay. Um, more cushions. Again, more cushions. What? Why have I kept all these cushions? I don't, I don't understand. These, these have been in here f since the days of my white sofa. I had a white leather sofa at some point years ago, and I think these were on it. And to be honest, these aren't very comfortable because they, they've, they've, they've actually got feathers in them and the little pointy bits on the feathers keep sticking out. So they're not actually that comfortable. So they can go in the charity um, as well. Well, we're slowly getting through it anyway. So this, right, so this is another blanket. Now I've got a dilemma there. I've already got two blankets. Do I need three blankets? Um, I mean, I've already got, I've already got a blanket in the car, in the van, um, but this, actually, I should keep this one. This is a, a proper wool blanket. Um, it's, a, it's from Marks and Spencers. It's a posh one. And in fact, I, I bought this when my mum was really ill um, and it kept her warm. So there's some sentimental value in here as well. Um, but yeah, this is an extremely good quality blanket and incredibly warm. So I'm going to keep that one. So I've got three blankets. And I think three blankets, I don't know, that's more than enough for anyone, isn't it? Um, but then we've got things like, ooh, duvets. Or is this pillows? I think, I think this is a duvet. Now this is a, a duvet I used to use in the van before I went over to the coverless duvet. And let's just watch it so they expand. So this is actually a duvet with the cover on. Um, so I shall separate those and this, this can go to charity. I've got about, I think I've got about four or five duvets in there. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be going to the textiles bank with these huge black bags full of textiles. Right, so I've decided I do want to keep back one duvet and one pair of pillows. I've got a really good quality duvet here. It's a Hungarian goose down one, uh, which is a nine tog. And it's very, very lightweight. So I've stuffed that and two previously vacuum packed pillows into this bag. And I'm just gonna have a go at uh, vacuum sealing this whole lot. And I think that'll be all the bedding that I'm going to keep. Obviously I need a duvet cover for it. So I'll need to select one duvet cover. Um, and some pillow covers, but uh, this this is these vacuum storage bags are genius because you've got this this massive volume here. You watch this, sorry. but it has made it this very hard pack. But that can quite happily sit in the airing cupboard, out of the way, and it's there if everyone needs it. Usually for a guest. Um, but at the moment I don't even have a guest bed, so <laughs> but at some point I will no doubt get something. Um, possibly, we'll see. We'll see how things go. Now this is an interesting one. These were all the rage at some point a few years ago. This is a oh so heavy, it's a weighted blanket. Um, and apparently it's it's particularly good for people with ADHD. Um, and some older folk as well like these, although this one's a little on the heavy side. Um, but I did try sleeping with one of those. It's like sleeping and being hugged at the same time. Uh, it's a kind of strange sensation, but what I found was turning over in bed at night, because I, I sleep on my side and I sort of sleep from side to side, and turning over with this thing pinning you down was really hard work. Um, but it was, a, it was an interesting experiment, but again, it's not something I find I would use 
again I, I think I used it for about a week just to see if I could get on with it but um, it's just sat in the, the cupboard ever since so that's going to go in a black bag and that can go into the uh, the textiles bank um, so somebody possibly somebody with ADHD could um, make use of it uh, but it's some, something I definitely won't be using so, talking of ADHD I, I have had uh, th thank you also for all the, the comments on the previous video the, the, the first one where I'm just starting off this project um, had lots of great insights and um, feedback from some of you guys lots of some nice suggestions as well um, it's interesting how many of you are like having similar thoughts or, or, or are in a similar place at the moment sort of feeling like you're drowning in junk and, and stuff right so this is another blanket i i bought this a number of years ago because it was kind of, i think i bought this when i was larping i wanted some sort of um synthetic sort of fur looking thing although it's not particularly fur looking um, but i haven't touched it in, in years so again that's another blanket that can go uh, looks like a bag. Oh, it's a rucksack. Why did I vacuum seal a rucksack? So it's a spare rucksack. Now I don't actually have a just a basic rucksack. You know, if I want to go on a day trip somewhere. Um, oh, it's a rucksack and oh, oh, several. Okay, so I've got a small basic rucksack see that could be useful if i'm going to go on a day trip somewhere um just to put some basic things in but another rucksack here which is a i think oh hey this one's quite posh oh, it's got a usb socket on it so you can put a power bank in there a little pocket in there oh this one's better and it looks like you can put a laptop in there as well uh, which is interesting it's like a laptop rucksack and put your sandwiches and your leads in there so which one obviously i don't need two rucksacks i can only wear one at a time which one would i keep so this one just has one basic pocket this one has one basic pocket roughly the same size and the second pocket if i want to put a laptop in there not that i'm never likely to do that and it has a usb right so this one I think, and it's slightly shiny as well. So I think this one, oh, and it's got a little reflective thing. I think I'll keep this one. It looks quite comfy. Not quite sure what that's for. Oh, it's going to just want to handle it. Um, right, so I'll keep this because a rucksack would be useful, uh, especially if I'm freeing up my life to sort of, you know, go out and do more things and be outside more and... and <laughs> Uh, you know, if this decluttering is going to help me do that, then, you know, a rucksack would be useful. So that can stay. Uh, these two can go. Now, I don't think I can put this in a textile bank. So this will have to go to uh, charity or do I just bin it? These, these are, this is where the dilemma comes in. I think charity, um, I think I know, I know somebody who can make use of that hopefully and then this is just a regular bag it's a little too small i've got in fact i've got it's i think i bought a set of two i've got its bigger brother um in the storeroom because obviously if you're going to go on holiday or something you need a bag to put your clothes and things in and i've got i've got a big bag for a proper holiday then i've got the slightly bigger version of this one um, and then a, just a basic hold all. So I don't need this. This is surplus requirement, so that can go as well. Right, just been running up and down stairs. Uh, we got there in the end, so that's all gone now. I've just got the one boot sale box and the, uh, the charity box. Uh, that's an empty to go. And downstairs, good grief, we've got 10 bags. 10 bags of unwanted textiles. Look at the sheer volume that is taking up in my house. 
um, or admittedly some of it was vacuum sealed. Uh, but this is all stuff I do not need. Um, and again, no wonder I was feeling oppressed when you, when you just have this sheer volume of stuff that you, ju you don't need. It's just there in your life, sitting there, um, taking up space, not only in your house, but in your head as well. Um, anyway, I'm going to head on down to the textile bank, load these up into Guinevere, uh, get those all dropped off and I'll be back. Right, so we are back and uh, everything that I need has been put back into the airing cupboard. And <laughs> what a difference. What an absolute difference. So literally I have um, two pillows and a duvet. So at some point if I get a guest bed, that will be covered. I'm going to use this fat pillow, I think in the van. Um, I've got a fattish pillow in the van, but this one's fatter. So I'm gonna use that one and that will go down where the headrest is in the back to stop my pillow falling down. So that's going in the van. I've got my three blankets. Uh, then we've just got a couple of sheets. These are generally the sheets and the duvet covers I use, which are like thick cotton, uh, slippery cotton. Uh, I've got obviously the one I've got on the bed and a spare. Uh, so obviously when I'm, I'm doing the washing of that, that one goes on. Got a couple of spare pillow slips. I have got a couple of silk sheets as well. Again, I like the slipperiness of them. So if for any reason, um, I don't have access. In fact, do I need two silk sheets? I don't need them, do I? I don't need two. Um, one will be perfectly adequate. The chance of me actually using that are pretty low because I've got these. So quite why, why I put those aside, I don't know. But um, in fact, I'm gonna make that one disappear. And, and then obviously um, I've whittled down my towels to the ones I already have in the shower and then uh, these ones and that's it. And that's all I need. To be honest, I don't even use these smaller ones, although they're, they're kind of hand towels, so they're good for, I could put one in the kitchen, I suppose, but I always use the tea towels. So um, these may still yet go, but these are just sort of normal size towels, which I use for showering. Um, I've got one, two, three, and I've got one downstairs in the, uh, in the shower and I, I've got this one which I took from the shower this morning. I normally have two towels in the shower uh, and I alternate them but whether I was debating whether to throw this one because it's quite it's not very soft it's quite a harsh towel but it's perfectly adequate. I think I'll put this one back down in the shower and we're good to go. Um, but yeah what a difference between that and what it was which was wall-to-wall -wall textiles so, and I feel lighter already just by seeing that. I suddenly feel this lightness that wasn't there before. And that's a good feeling. So good, that's another stage of this um, particular project. So I've now done the office and that's looking good and a lot less cluttery. I have got still some things there, but those are mostly necessary. Um, so obviously this is not about just getting rid of as much stuff as you can. This is about getting rid of the stuff that is not necessary. Um, this room, again, this is still going to remain my sorting room until the whole project is over, at which point I will make some decisions about this room. But my, uh, my loft room, that's all done now. My airing cupboard's now done, my office is done. Just my bedroom left to do. Uh, which is mostly going to be clothes. I've got a, f a wardrobe full of clothes and a wardrobe full of shirts and jeans and things. And I may, I know I recently did the capsule wardrobe, but I now know there are some things I've never worn and some things I wear quite often. So it should be hopefully quite straightforward to go through that. Anyway, I'll worry about that another day. But that has been quite a, quite a good day today, got a lot done. And again, I'm feeling a lot lighter. Um, so it's like I say, my bedroom left to do, then the kitchen left to do and the living room as well. I know my living room is a little bit uh, empty, but I've got a lot of drawers 
and um, little places where knickknacks are stored away. So I need to get on and sort out my drawers, my DVD collection, things like that. Uh, so they're all be sorted out. There's not a huge amount going on here. Still debating on my robot vacuum cleaner whether to keep it or get rid of it because I don't use it a huge amount. But yeah, I've got the kitchen, got the cupboards full of everything. So that I have a proper sort out and then obviously the shed. Now I've done a preliminary sort out on the shed, uh, but now I need to drill down into the boxes that are remaining and then like probably bring each box in, tip it all out, and then only put in the things that I want to save and then the rest goes. But then that'll be the whole house. And uh, hopefully uh, we can then take things on to the next stage, whatever that happens to be. I don't know what it is yet. Oh, and I've got to do under my stairs as well. I've got um, just, I mean, the Hoover's fine there. It sort of lives there, but I've just got all this mess under there that needs um, sorting out. So that's for another day. But that is it for this video, I think. So it's, we're making good progress. Um, it's a shame the previous video didn't have any sound on it. That was kind of, I was really annoyed about that because I, I went to edit it and I thought, oh no, there's no sound. Um, so I ruined a perfectly good video. Um, but anyway, hopefully this one has sound and we're good to go. So that is it for this video. Uh, thanks again for all your amazing comments um, on the particularly on the previous video, lots of uh, very, very inter interested parties want to know how I get on doing this uh, because it's something that they're interested in doing themselves. Um, so hopefully this may have given you some ideas or, some, you know, sort of just helped you work out whether it's a thing you can do or not. Um, but anyway, I'm waffling. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.